Hello, my name is Lowell Vanderpool, and this channel is dedicated to IT students, IT professionals, and anyone who enjoys learning technical subjects. Let's start with the problem that we faced with this Acer laptop. Was one, it had a non-replaceable keyboard. Now here is the back side of that same keyboard, and you can see the keyboard shows in a number of areas through this steel plate. The back steel plate holds everything in place so your keyboard doesn't move. And the way that they attach this plate over the top of the keyboard was small plastic melted rivets that go through and hold everything in place. But you can't remove those plastic rivets easily. So I'm going to bring that up so you can see it real close. You can see the plastic rivets and those are holding that back plate. The back plate then holds the keyboard in place. So you have to remove that melted plastic where you see I'm pointing to all of those flattened melted plastic standoffs now have to be removed in order to get the back plate off in order to get the keyboard out. This is a real pain. Now I'm deliberately showing you the problem and the difficulties of removing this keyboard right up front so that you can decide right away, do I want to tackle this or not? This is not for everyone. Not everyone's going to have the appropriate tools and the skills and experience to do this type of repair. I will get into the full teardown. But I want you to see what you're getting into before you decide to tear it all down. Now, one of the ways that I started off was with a flat blade razor. You do have to be careful. This is a razor. And if you slip and you don't understand how to use this tool properly, you have to be very careful with a razor knife like this. It's an exposed blade. And if you're not comfortable with using something like this, this is not the way you want to go. Just be careful. This is a very, very dangerous tool if you don't know what you're doing. But I began to razor off all of those plastic rivets one by one. Just took my time, used the razor blade to just take them off. Now you can use something like a Dremel tool, like this, if you want to remove those plastic melted tops. There's a variety of bits and heads that you can use with a Dremel tool that will do just as well as a razor blade. Again, it's a rotating tool. It can be dangerous. If you don't have experience, you probably want to be careful even with this type of tool. Those, those tips that I'm showing you are the best ones to use to grind those plastic tops off. Now you can also use a soldering iron with a proper tip. This will mess up the tip. If you've got a nice soldering iron with a nice tip, this is going to destroy the tip. But you can heat the plastic and then kind of scrape it off. And you can also remove those plastic the same way. So now I have removed all those plastic heads and we can now remove the defective keyboard. And it'll just come right out of the plastic case that holds it in. Now this is a defective keyboard and it's pretty easy to purchase one of these. You can purchase a new one on Amazon. The one that I purchased actually comes with a backlight. So it actually has the backlit keys for the replacement. Now this is the new keyboard and it has a backlit module that goes behind it. And the mother, the laptop does have the connector for this backlit piece that goes behind the keyboard once you put it into the, the case. So this is a backlit. You can purchase it and the motherboard does have the connector for it, even though originally it wasn't there. So this is a new keyboard, the backlit. This made it more challenging to reinstall. So now here's the hard part. How do we reattach this keyboard into this case so that it stays firm? I used edger string. I just chopped off a chunk of edger string and used that to re with a soldering iron to 
melt that edger string right back on top of those pieces of plastic standoffs. That worked fairly well. It wasn't great. Now the challenging part came when putting the backlight component onto the keyboard. After much looking and searching and trying to figure out what to do, I ended up gluing that with construction glue very carefully on the back of the keyboard, making sure that I didn't get any glue inside the keys which are exposed. So that took care of that. I used construction glue and I wouldn't use anything else but construction glue. Now the next challenge was putting the back plate on. Remember what held this back plate on was all those melted rivets. Well those were all gone now and I had added the complexity of having the backlight there so I ended up having again very carefully very thoughtfully put selected areas of construction glue to hold that back cover on. Now if you don't have the backlight module on you may be able to use a soldering iron and some plastic and solder those plastic rivets back on to the back plate. But if you use the back backlit module you're probably going to have to glue in some ways that back plate on to the keyboard. So one of the biggest mistakes that people who are inexperienced with laptops and mobile phones and small devices is not using the proper bit set size. So if you look at my bits up here, I've got Phillips heads. I've got 000 Phillips head, 00 Phillips head, 0 Phillips head, and then a Phillips head that's called a 1. You must use the right Phillips head size on the screw that you're going to remove or you're going to strip it. Now when I put my bit into the screw head I want it to be firm and tight. I don't want any movement if it's sloppy and I've got slack in that bit head and the screw head that's the wrong size and you must get a different size otherwise you're going to strip it. Another important step is to if you're inexperienced with taking apart laptops, take a piece of paper and draw all the screw holes on the piece of paper. And as you take out screws, tape them to those drawn diagrams. Do the same for your motherboard. Your screws will always get back to where they're supposed to be. It's very important that you have some kind of plastic spludger or nylon spludgers like you see in this kit. Also the triangles, the plastic triangles or guitar picks work great. The plastic ones are important because they won't short out equipment while the, the laptop is energized and has the battery engaged. So you want this so you won't damage the plastic or mar the surfaces. You can go ahead and begin removing the screws in the motherboard. Make sure that you draw a diagram of the motherboard and tape those screws as you remove them back onto the diagram so that they, you always know where those screws belong. I'm now removing the screws on the heat pipe over the CPU. Always remove and replace screws in a diagonal pattern. Remember heat pipes put pressure on the CPU chip so you want to do it in a diagonal pattern so that you have an even distribution of pressure 
when you're putting it on and when you're taking it off. So here I'm using 99% isopropanol alcohol to thoroughly clean the CPU and the heat pipe of old thermal grease and I'm going to put fresh thermal grease onto the CPU. Make sure you do this. Now here you're going to see me work with the covers, the access covers to memory and the hard drive. And then you can see where I've, I'm pointing to the, the mesh that's glued on the inside of that memory access area. All that does is protect the release of RF energy into the atmosphere, into your home or business. Now once you have the back cover off, one of the most important next steps is to remove that battery. As long as that battery is energizing that motherboard and you have the cover removed, it is highly susceptible to shorts and you don't want to do that. You're going to burn out circuits. So make sure you disengage that battery. You don't have to remove it if you don't need to, but make sure you unplug it. Once you have removed all the screws and you've taken the battery out, inspect it carefully for any kind of swelling. Lithium ion cells, many times when they go bad, they start to swell. If you see any distortion or any disfiguration in the battery pack, replace it. This particular laptop has many micro miniature connectors and cables. It is essential that I understand how each connector and cable works, how I can release it, how I can connect it. So I'm going to take a times 12 magnifying glass and look at each one carefully to make sure that I understand how that connector is built, what releases it, what connects it, so that I don't damage the connector. Otherwise, I have to replace the motherboard. Now with my magnifying glass in hand and my nylon spludger, I'm very carefully releasing those plastic hold down mechanisms for the cables. Now this particular connector has no place to grab. I could have gotten a pair of needle nose, but you can see I'm pulling on the wire, which is not a good idea, but it was very difficult. Again, I'm just gently working that connector out and that holds the lithium CMOS battery. Now I'm removing the trackpad connector and if you'll notice the connector right beside it has nothing in it. That actually is the keyboard backlight connector that I purchased that did not originally come with this laptop. Now this is the keyboard cable and we're removing that. Again, take your time. Don't get in a hurry. Remember to keep your hands clean and don't touch the contacts on those cables. Your hand has oils on it and you can contaminate those low voltage connections. It's also a good idea to take that isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip and clean those contacts. Since you're in there, go ahead and clean those kind of low voltage contacts. Anytime when you're tearing down a laptop and you're dealing with a connector that's giving you a problem, it's really difficult to remove. Slow down. Do not get in a hurry and damage that connector. power supply connector for the fan was really tough. It was really a tight fit and I had to use the nylon spludger to gently rock it back and forth in order to remove it. So here again, I'm dealing with a tough connector that's very tight. I'm using my spludger, gently rocking it back and forth, trying to remove it as carefully as possible.
I'm now working on the video connector on the motherboard. It's, it's attached with tape and a friction type connection. Now almost all the screws for the motherboard are removed and we're getting ready to gently work the motherboard off the case. Now this is the Wi-Fi module and they have two coax connectors on here. Be very gentle removing and connecting those coax connectors. Again, you damage it, you're going to replace the module. Now that the motherboard is removed, you can see that metal plate that holds the keyboard in place. We have a few more items to remove, but basically you're almost to the point that you're ready to work on that metal plate that holds the keyboard in place. If you're watching this at this point in the video, you are a hardcore technology person. 90% of the people who are on YouTube who watch a video that I create are gone in three minutes. So the fact that you're watching me right now tells me you're pretty hardcore and you're the very reason we do all the work, all the video editing, all the preparation is because of you. You're the person we're after. You want to learn, you want to understand, and you're willing to watch 25 minutes, 30 minutes, minutes of just geek stuff and we really really appreciate you one way that you can help us tremendously is support us by liking a video and subscribing it's simple two clicks and it doesn't cost you anything and it really really helps us if you can join that's great it really does help us it's two dollars and something and a month that's a cup of coffee a month we really really appreciate it but it's more important if you can like and subscribe and it's the best way of supporting this channel.